Hi. Yeah. Now you're going. Hi folks, this is Dylan here with Tabletop Foundry. We also have Justin for once. He's behind the mic and not my butt. Hi. Uh, today we are going to sit and start a new installment to our channel. You'll catch this eventually on our YouTube page. Uh, face, uh, excuse me, in Facebook group, we are Tabletop Foundry. Today we're going to uh, start this new segment. We are calling it the Game of the Month. This is a game that we feel that we want to bring to the overall community that most people have probably heard of, most people have probably seen it. I've seen this at Walmart and Target here in Central Texas. And this wonderful game has probably became my brand new, to me anyways, favorite game of all time. And I'm not just trying to sit there and, and get you wild up here. We're gonna sit and do a full playthrough. We kind of sped through setup. The only thing we haven't done is selected our round cards. This game is two to four players and playthrough usually takes so, about an hour per game. Uh, me and Justin have actually spent an entire day going through every card in this deck and playing through it. And um, it's a lot like Risk meets Monopoly. This is all great, Dylan, but you know what? You haven't told me side nice spots? The name of the game. The name of the game. Well, get ready to sit there and fly through the friendly skies. We are playing Pan Am. So, as I said, we kind of had the game board already set up. Um, when you do set up this wonderful game, you get to sit there and have a play mat. You're going to have two types of planes. When you start. When you start. Uh, the little one is called a tri-motor. The bigger one is a clipper. And this game is set in the early days, or as they say, the golden age of aviation. Uh, with the start of Pan American Airways. They are a company that was the epitome of aviation back in the 60s and 70s, and all the way up until 1991 when they shut down uh, operations. Me as a pilot, this is a company I would have dreamed to fly with back in the day if I could. Um, and today we're gonna sit there and start our own uh, aviation companies in our own flight, um, and try to sit there and compete with Pan Am and buy stock into them. I am playing the green team, our premier inner global aviation incorporated. And Justin playing the gray team is Trans Imperial Airways. As always, a heretic, aren't you, Justin? Always, always. And so when you set up the game, you're going to get a nice little game board. You're going to get $12. You're going to get these little cogs called engineers. And then you're going to get two destination cards. These two destination cards do get revealed. And this is where you start off. I have Tokyo and New York. And Justin here has Manila and San Francisco. So yeah. Ooh. Okay, no good. So. Shall we uh, pick our rounds, my good sir? Well, we will pick the rounds. And oh, also, we get $12 and we get what's called a directive card. And the directive card is a hidden card. Ooh. Oh, good one that only you get to see and you get to activate it one round later. Yeah, so, so, a little hand line, so. we're gonna sit there and pick our rounds. We're gonna start off with round seven. All of these are already pre-shuffled. So I'm just gonna go straight off the top if that's okay with you or do you wanna shuffle? Oh, that's hard to shuffle. So seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. I guess we're gonna go with that one. And then we're going to sit there and take the rest and they go immediately into the game box. You do not need them anymore. So like most of these modern board games that have come out recently, there's only seven rounds. It, it keeps the time going. And as I said, we already have the game board set up. So we have our one through seven, they go in the event section. We have our destination cards. We have our airports. We have our airplanes we could build. Hint, hint, Boeing, get your stuff together. We have the stock prices for Pan American Airways, our routes, and our directives. This game is very, I'm not going to say monotonous, but it's very organized in its layout. Everything starts off with the layout of the board, and the first player to go first is the last person to fly in an airplane. Unfortunately, this is where my kids say I have an unfair advantage. Being a commercial pilot, I fly for a living. So Justin, what was the last time you were in an airplane? Last year. Oh, last time I was in an airplane was January 10th when I went to spin training. 
yes, I have flipped the airplane upside down and screamed like a little girl the entire time. So anyways, will you please mark our stock prices so we know where we're going with this? Well, to figure that out, we're going to sit there and flip over the event phase round one. Radio Communications. This takes place in the year 1928. Each player draws a destination card from the deck. Stock prices start at five. Ooh. And then at the end of the turn, the expansion of one dice roll. And the little cool fun quote with this is US airline installs radios and planes to improve navigation during foul weather, the company claims. And so this is where it tells you how to do everything. Your event, the round it plays for, the year, the, ra uh, the announcement, your action, the stock prices, and your expansion rules was just a little fun fact. And instrument flying is probably one of my favorite flyings in the game. So with me being first player, I get to go first. Go ahead and draw your destination card there, my good sir. Right, let's flip these bad boys over. So we have Calcutta. Beijing. San Francisco. Hi, Davida. And Beirut. Beirut. And now we get to do what our card says. When we, yep. We draw a destination card. What are you getting? Havana, ooh la la. I got Saigon. Ooh, Miss Saigon. We can play, by the way. Oh, yes. So, in the round of sequence, first event, we reveal, we set the stock prices, and the second event is engineer. Because this is round one, we have no engineer and priority access, and so we take our five engineers, because this is a two-player game, and we start bidding on what we want to do. Um, because this is very beginning, the first bid, oh yeah, I want to go visit our good friend Davida in San Francisco. Oh, see, I already have San Fran, if you will. So, I'm going to give a boat to build me an airport. You're going to build that airport. Cool. And so the round goes back and forth around in circles of one player takes a turn in bits. So with San Francisco, I'm going to sit there and go, you know what? I... Ooh, what do I want to do? I want a route. So I'm going to sit there and set up a way for my airport to go from one place to another. And this being said... I think I'm going to also choose a route. Ooh, interesting. With that, I'm going to go direct because I think I want to go first next turn. Oh, uh, yeah. You can, you can. But I also like a directive card, my good sir. Oh, that's fine. And you know what? I really don't want you to have that airport, so I'm gonna outbid you. Oh, by all means, this is fine. Because I'm gonna take a second round. Oh, you can take that second round. I'm gonna sit there and take, place my last guy in Beijing. Oh, you are going to go for Beijing of all places. Well, I'm going to be that guy. Ooh. I'm going to outbid you on the airport. Oh, interesting. So, with rounds complete, as we say in the artillery world, all of our engineers have been placed. The next step is resolution. And this is where the game gets really organized, and if you don't like organization, it's going to kind of annoy you. But you go by a flow. Airports for A, destinations for B, airplanes for C, routes for D, and directives for E. And the order of flow goes, everything goes with airports first. And with this being said, Justin's first bid of $3 is outbid by my bid of $5. But Justin wins the bid at $7. So, good sir, I present to you your engineer, your airport, and $7, please, to the bank. There's your $7 to the bank. So, $7 is confirmed. That goes into the bank. And now Justin can place his airport anywhere on the map he wants. Yeah, I think I'm going to go straight to Bangkok then. Bangkok! Yep. Hey, Justin. No. <laughs> so with airports done, we're going to go to destinations. I have no bids on destinations, so I'm going to take my two engineers back, and I'm going to take my two routes. 
So I can now fly a plane and land a plane in San Francisco and Beijing. Calcutta and Beirut, nobody bid for. And so the bank is gonna sweeten the deal. We want people to come visit them. So they're gonna pay $1. And we're gonna draw two destination cards. Nobody bid on anything in the airplane, so phase C is already skipped. Sorry, Boeing. Nobody likes you right now. So sad. <laughs> Planes are boring. And so then we go to route D, which is the routes. Now, the way the routes go is it goes from left to right in order of what was placed. So I place my route first, so I pull my engineer back, and then I get to sit there and make a route. So I have San Francisco, and I do not have any of the other connecting cities, such as Havana. Mexico, uh, I have Havana, I don't have Mexico City, and I don't have Seattle. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna sacrifice my Havana route to sit there and get a one-time play to go from San Francisco to Mexico City. Taking my two uh, plane, my little clipper, and claiming that route, which moves my income up two. And then this goes to Justin, he gets his engineer back, and he gets to make his first route. So my first route, since I have Saigon, and I can throw an airport at Bangkok, Bangkok, I can go from Saigon to Bangkok. And so he claims that route, his income comes up, and the income is, uh... I should get two, because I have the airport. Ah, uh, yes. And whenever you have the airport... Beep, beep, why are you beeping? But whenever you have the airport, it's this here, and uh, it moves your marker up one. You can sit there and move this a maximum of five times, and you have control over it the entire time. So he gets two income, not just for his one airplane there, but for his one airport. I have a two income, oops, engineer down. Oh, those silly combat engineers. I know. And so he has two, one for the airport, one for the tri-motor. And now he has a second route that he's gonna sit there and play. Yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna sacrifice to go from Saigon to Hong Kong. Ooh, what are you sacrificing from Saigon to Hong Kong for? Remember, it's not the same color, so it has to be two. Exactly so. No, that's San Francisco. I'm sorry. It's goodbye. And we'll go right there and put my income up another one. Ooh, so he's now at three income. And then that is it for route. Uh, for route. So we move over to directives. My guy's gonna hang tight. I'm gonna get my directive card. I read it, and I pass Justin his directive card without me looking. And for those on our who are going to catch the game later, here is mine. The board got about working now. Here is mine. So, if you want to see what you tell other, Scott, you got to come to the YouTube channel too. Ooh. And so, with the end of our resolutions, all directors are done. We go to Pan Am. As we said, this is a game in homage of these uh, fine individuals at work. And so the first thing they're going to do is we get to roll the expansion dice. And this is just a little D6 with a lot of funky markings. I'm being player one. I get to roll this dice once. And it is the strange dot dot and triangle triangle. What that means is Pan Am is going to expand from Miami out along these routes. So the dot dots along uh, the South America route and the triangles along the Pacific route. Now there is an alternate rule. Instead of starting in Miami, which is where Pan Am originally started, you can start off in Rome, but we like keeping it original. So Pan Am is gonna start their two routes and they have instantly taken over Miami to Havana and Miami to San Juan. And from there, after that, income. You get paid. You are a businessman after all. So Justin gets his how much? Three. Three. And I get my two. And then after we all get paid, next up, stonks. And 
so with stunts, you get to buy it at the set price of $5 a stock. <sighs> this is expensive at the very beginning. Yes, it is. You know what? I'm buying one stunt. You know what? I will take Just one. Just one. So, unlike Redditors, we're sitting there buying cars early. Stonks. Thank you. And that's the end of my turn. In round one, I pass the first player over to Justin. And now that we don't have this going, we're not going to explain this much steering gear. And we're going to set, kind of speed it up. All right, so round two, long distance travel. Remove the cruiser tile in the plains area. Oh, so as we said, we weren't going to explain. You notice we have these two cards blocking these. And this cruiser is normally activated on the third round. But we have a special card. It has now been pulled out early, so we can now expand our flights on any of the three titles. Yep, and our stock prices go up. Ooh. And too expensive, guys. And what's the cool little quip of the day? Intercontinental demand accelerates the development of long range aircraft. And what year is it? 1936. 1936. We just pulled ourselves out of the Great Depression. Yep. Gearing up for World War II. So, with that being said, we've done the events. Now on to engineers. And, oh look, I have priority access. But let's show our destination cards. Yeah, so our destination cards, we have... Lesbian. Lesbian. And... Brayaka JP. We're from Texas. Don't make fun of us. Just a little. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, with that being said, Good thing I did it by stonks. I am buying the cruiser. Yep, you can go ahead and buy that cruiser, cause I'm gonna take mine. I'm gonna go to Calcutta. Ooh, Calcutta. Now, our direct uh, priority access has been placed. Now, Justin, your first turn. My first turn? victory to you Justin and folks that is how you play Pan Am in a very very quick victory at the end good job Justin hostile takeovers for the win so folks thank you for joining us at uh, Hero Force Foundry uh, Table Hero Force Tabletop Foundry wow I am tired cool hey, Hero Force we just shouted out to you so that's something cool <laughs> you guys have a wonderful day be awesome